Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and today I'm gonna work on my favorite kind of branded content. One where a brand wants a concept explained and has no input whatsoever with the actual content itself. Today I'm working with Asus on this video. They're launching a bunch of Chromebooks soon and they wanted a video on how Chromebooks actually work. So that's the association part. The views here are mine and mine alone and is in no way tampered with by any brand. With that disclaimer out of the way, what are Chromebooks? Can they replace a Windows laptop? What are the pros and cons that come along with Chromebooks? Let's find out in today's video. When we talk buying a laptop, what should we look at? What's usually important? First, of course, is the performance. Next, I'd say is portability. You know, the size, the weight and all that. You want it to be as portable as possible, but then again, you want to make sure it's that portability is not coming at the cost of battery life. That is a fine line to walk. Now, another very important criteria is the ecosystem itself, the number of apps that you get access to, and also how easy these apps are to use. Back when Google initially came up with Chrome OS, it was pretty much a Chrome browser. You wanna browse? Cool. But you couldn't really do much else. Today though, it's a whole different ballgame. So what can you actually do with Chromebooks? First up, you get access to Google Play. So pretty much everything that you find on Android, it can be run on Chromebooks. So yeah, even if you wanna play games, you can do that. Additionally, there's Google Classroom, if that's something you're looking for. From a productivity standpoint, you get Microsoft Office, Google Docs. Uh, hell, you even get some Adobe products here. Now, if you are a student looking for a laptop for online classes, or you wanna say, pick one up for your parents who might not be very technologically savvy, the Chromebook actually makes quite a good case for itself. While I spoke about the productivity aspect of things, it's not just productivity that you can use it for. Say you wanna have a Zoom call or a Skype call, that's available, cause Google Play Store. The entire interface for the Play Store is very familiar. It's pretty much what you'd see on an Android tablet. So just hit download and we're done. Like I mentioned earlier, this also means you can get some casual gaming done on this uh, Chromebook. Here, I am running God of War Chains of Olympus on PPSSPP. I'm actually running it at 2x the native PSP resolution with anti-aliasing and as you can see it runs fine. So there's enough horsepower underneath. PPSSPP is running better than it does on a lot of phones. Now if you are a more serious user then Chrome extensions and Google Play aren't just gonna cut it for you. Chromebooks these days they do let you run pretty much any piece of Linux software so that opens up an entire new world of possibilities on what you can do with these Chromebooks. Now, Windows lets you do all this as well. So why Chromebooks? Why should I go for that instead? If that is your question, it's a good question because that was also my first question. Now here's the deal guys, Chrome OS is much lighter than Windows. Windows gives you good performance when you have a certain level of hardware. If you say looking at the sub $300 or 20,000 rupee-ish price point, it's quite difficult to find a Windows laptop that matches the Chromebook in terms of performance. The price to performance ratio is quite high with this. Of course, we do reach a point of diminishing returns, so Windows still rules when it comes to mid and high end laptops. But on low end hardware, now this here is a Celeron N3350 processor with four gigs of RAM. And you saw how the PSP was running. Now see how it boots up in mere seconds, and it's not just even that, uh, the ease of use, the smoothness with the apps themselves, switching between multiple things. For this hardware, I'd say the experience is better than what Windows would offer. Chromebooks also do another thing better than Windows, manage battery. Given how Chrome OS is targeted at lower end hardware, the battery, it fares much better in comparison to Windows. This means you get almost twice the battery life than if you say you ran Windows on the same hardware. So for a student on a budget, Chromebooks, they do seem to be an excellent option. Uh, they are portable, they offer excellent performance, both while not compromising on battery. Now, even for someone who's not very technically savvy, the familiarity, the learning curve, now that comes into play. Here's where Chrome OS resembling Android helps. Right from the universal search, to the app draw or app icons themselves, or even the fact that you start up by signing in with your Gmail address, just like you would on an Android phone. It's all very familiar and very simple. Anyone who's ever used an Android phone can get up and running in mere seconds. 
In other words, the learning curve here is very short, no matter what your level of technical expertise is. Now, like I said, I am working with ASUS on this video and here's where that part kicks in. ASUS are currently launching six Chromebooks and you can see all those on screen now. The first five share the same processor. It's the Intel Celeron N3350 with four gigs of RAM. The C223 is the 11.6 inch Q. 423 is the 14 inch. 523 is the 15 inch. The last two, they have touch and non-touch variants. Uh, now the C214, on the other hand, it sports a N4020 Celeron 11.6 inch HD display, but it flips 360 degrees, gets 64 gigs of base storage. I mean, I leave the specs on screen, you guys can pause and read through it if you want more information. All I can say for now is that the pricing seems very competitive. Asus says this is introductory pricing, whatever that means, at least for now, the pricing appears compelling. Of course, I'll have a lot more to say in my full review. And talking about that, guys, which of these Chromebooks would you want to see me review? Let me know in the comments and I'll definitely review one of them at least. Personally, I'm leaning towards covering the base C223. But whatever your thoughts, thoughts are, leave them in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of today's video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.